Marcus. Welcome back. If you just join us, you're listening to the Smooth Style on Vegas Radio. We are Smooth 19.1. Yes, we are. Business Express, and uh, <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, Rose we are the here. Smoothest Dial on Lagos Radio. Yes, indeed. He needs no introduction. <laughs> good morning, Coyote. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning, Lagos. How is everybody doing? I hope everybody is fine on this. Uh, today's Thursday, yes? Yes, it is. Okay, okay, okay. So, and Coyote, how about the all hashtags, phone numbers? Yes, you can reach out to us stuff. on WhatsApp at 0809 On Twitter, we're at Smooth981FM with the hashtag Business Express 981. All right, let's hop into it. So, uh, banking stocks drove the markets upwards yesterday, 0.5%. Uh, 30,878 points is where the stock market closed. GTB was up by about 2.8%. Zenith Bank up by 0.9%. Fidelity Bank, uh, they pushed things uh, upwards. However, the banking sector was the only sector that recorded uh, positive activity. All the others were down, as in consumer goods, oil and gas, and so on and so forth. Uh, 21 stocks uh, gained uh, in value. 10 of them declined. First, Aluminum was our top gainer. Uh, uh, and I think uh, Union Daikon was our top... No, UACN, Property Development Company, was our top loser on the exchange. Um, moving into our stories, the first thing we're going to be talking about is uh, foreign direct investment, FDI. Uh, the headline here, Ghana overtakes Nigeria as West Africa's largest FDI recipient in 2018. So um, as far as the this report is concerned, it's coming from the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD. And they're saying that uh, Ghana brought in $3.3 billion in 2018. Nigeria fell by 36%, almost 40% uh, a drop uh, to $2.2 billion. Uh, dollars as far as FDI is concerned. Now, FDI, of course, is foreign direct investment. It's when investors come into your country and sink money into the country in terms of infrastructure. It's money that's, it's permanent money, all right? It's it does, yeah, it's not like FPI, which is foreign portfolio investment, where they come and they buy your stocks and then they sell them after a while and then they leave. So this is permanent money. This is the money that Nigeria needs in order to progress, when uh, to make progress. When Kingsley Mogalu talks about a one trillion naira venture capital fund that he wants to use to fund this and that, that's coming from foreign investment. I think Atiko has mentioned the same thing as well. That's the lifeblood. Everything we need to do, we need money. But let's talk about why foreign direct investment is dropping in Nigeria, why, why it it's increasing in, in, in Ghana. Hey, look, if an investor is going to bring money into your country, you have to give them something that is going to entice them to let them know that they're going to get a return on their investment. And they're not seeing that uh, right now. You know, I was talking to somebody yesterday who was saying they want to move to Canada. Yeah, we've, we've seen a number of Nigerians emigrating out of the country. And I asked them, I said, look, why would you want to move to Canada? Anyone that's listening right now, why would you want to move to the United States? Why would you want to move to the UK? Why would you move? Move within Africa. Mm -hmm. Follow the money. Where, where is the money going within Africa? The money is going... Egypt, as far as the entire Africa. So Ghana brought in $3.3 billion. Nigeria brought in $2.2 Egypt, who I mentioned yesterday as one of the countries that floated their currency, by the way, I'm still not letting that floating issue go. They brought in $7.9 billion. This is Egypt that had the Arab Spring mm. how many years ago, where their entire economy was in the toilet, and yet they were able to turn things around using market reforms. You will not attract investment into your country unless you have proper market reforms that will attract those investors. The gubernatorial debate. Uh, that took place what two weeks ago they asked them that's uh, Samuel Lu, Agbaje, I, remember, I can't remember what the other guy's name is and then Babatunde Balamusi they asked them about in, in, uh, technology in Lagos right bringing improving technology here Balamusi you know when he answered the question he was talking about ICT information communications technology and how we have to want to increase broadband tech that is broadband internet uh, in, in, in Nigeria Fiber optic cables need to be laid in order for this for broadband connectivity to be improved in Nigeria. If you want people to be able to connect, get past on the internet and so on and so forth and improve your economy, you have to do that. But right of way, which is the charges that companies have to pay in order to lay those cables into the ground, they're too high. They're too high, right? And so as a result of that, you don't have the investment that you should be getting in broadband. Um, uh, what else is there? Oil and gas, the petroleum industry governance bill. That thing has been laying dormant for the last 20 years. I mean, the Senate passed it last year. They've signed it into law, but Buhari hasn't signed it. You're not going to get foreign direct investment into the oil and gas industry until you sign the PIGB. Uh, financial inclusion, you know, where, where are we now? 36%, 40% or so. 
until you allow the telcos mm. to push financial inclusion until you make things easy for them to 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 to, to invest there and make people get access to money that's not going to happen unless you make the proper reforms so so these are the reasons why we're not seeing proper investment coming into nigeria because the proper market reforms are not they're just they're just not there the government is just you know wasting so much time in making sure that these things happen so look if you want to move anywhere consider ethiopia mm. consider kenya consider rwanda consider south africa uh don't don't bother moving to the west the other african countries that are doing the work uh, as far as the continent uh, is concerned ethiopia's president i'm uh, sorry prime minister how old is he 42 years old uh -huh. he ended the beef with Eth with eritrea He's increased trade in the country. He's turned things around. Davos, you mentioned, uh, Ayo, I think I heard your, your, your broadcast in the morning during the news. You're talking about how China made a speech saying everybody should calm down. And that's very rich. China's <laughs> GDP has slowed down now. Uh, <laughs> and everybody is, is, is afraid because they're not going to be, uh, their demand for oil is going to go down. Oil prices have dipped. These trade wars are going on. But my point about Davos is this. I was watching CNN the other day. Egypt, again, they are, they are, um, that is the top recipient of FDI in Africa. Their Minister of Trade and Investment was on Dav in Davos. She was talking to CNN, selling Egypt to foreign investors there, telling them about what the market reforms that they've made, looking for money. Where is Nigeria in Davos? No representation. It's only Egypt, I think Zimbabwe, and South Africa that are in Davos now talking to, to the money bags over there to bring money into their economies. It, we, we, we got a long way to go. We got a long way to go. Um, Lagos, don't forget, you can send messages in. Let us know your thoughts. It's uh, 0809 444 0981. All right. Taxes. This is another interesting one. So, All this right. is a uh, VAT. When you say it, it sounds like it's going to be interesting. <laughs> so, so, according to our Minister of Finance, uh, Zainab Ahmed, uh, she's saying that uh, VAT, that's a value added tax, uh, may actually rise next year. They're looking at increasing VAT. So, Nigeria's our VAT uh, is 5%. Yeah. So, I remember cutting my hair at a barber, barber shop, I can't remember when it was, it 2017, 2016. Saw the bill and they added 5%. This is something that doesn't usually happen. They added 5% to my bill. I was like, oh, wow, what's this? She's like, oh, well, it's VAT now. I'm supposed to be paying VAT. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. I didn't argue. But this is something that should be happening across the board. So, she's saying that they're looking at possibly taxing soft drinks so all you lovers of your carbonated sugar water drinks they might be thinking of uh, doing that right now there is a tax on alcohol and i believe tobacco uh, products even the alcohol tax and by the way the brewery sector wasn't very happy about this because they're trying to their margins are already squeezed enough as it is they've staggered it they've they've they've, they've uh, so maybe they'll increase about five six percent this year and then another five six percent the following year so they're probably look they're looking at doing this for carbonated drinks but again, here's the problem about it being serious. Nigeria has one of the lowest VAT rates in Africa and the world. We're at 5%. You know what VAT is in Ghana? How much is it? 15%. Three times Nigeria's VAT. I know that recently uh, there was some parliamentary thing where they wanted to reduce it to, to 12. I think it's coming down to 12 or so. But VAT in Ghana is high. You know why you need a high VAT and you high taxes? You have to fund things. Nigeria has been talking about universal health care for a long time. We want to be able to get health, everybody insured. We want to be able to take care of everyone. Everybody, if, you, if you're going to the hospital, you have any issues. How do you think you're going to pay for that stuff? You need, you need higher taxes. Your taxes have to be higher in order for you to pay for these kind of things. So the, 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 the Minister of Finance is, is, just, is just tiptoeing around this issue. Why? Because unfortunately... We have a socialist government. We have a government that feels that, listen, um, there should be a cap on fuel prices because the poor have to be shielded, even though fuel prices in other countries... I, I keep going back to Ghana. You pay 300 and something naira for a liter of fuel in Ghana, right? You pay about almost 400 or so in Angola or so. So if you're going to be serious about raising revenue, because yesterday with our guest from AfriInvest, we're talking about uh, debt servicing to revenue, where it's like 60 naira of every 100 naira that Nigeria brings in goes towards servicing debt. You, 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 if, if you want to be able to diversify where you bring in money, you have to look at taxes. Tax to GDP ratio for Nigeria is what, 6 7%? It's much higher in South Africa. It's much higher in Ghana. It's much higher in other African countries. So. You know, again, the headline even says VAT raise is likely because according to the Minister of Finance, she said that um, 
it might take an act of uh, the, the, the National Assembly might have to take action. So they're looking at sending a bill. Uh, let me let me quote. Her. It says we are studying the possibility of a VAT increase, but this requires an amendment of the law. Um, so they might actually. They said the steering committee will look at the increase, and it's possible the increase will be selected either so that you know not across the board. They also, they'll send a law to the National Assembly. So the chances of that happening anytime soon, I don't know. But I just, again, don't believe the federal government is as serious as it should be as far as tax revenue uh, right. is, con is concerned. All right, Rotu, so let's take some comments from WhatsApp. Now, don't forget, if, you, if you'd like to send your comments, send them to 0809-444-0981. Now, Frank Akomu says, you asked where is Nigeria in Davos? Well, Nigeria is on campaign trail. We have elections. <laughs> nobody is looking. And now people are coming for you, Rotus, on your statement on tax. As uh -huh. expected. Yes. Ah, there we go. Rotus is just being elitist with his analysis. All right. So um, with regards to um, higher tax rates and also relocation to Ethiopia, Kenya, ETC, you mentioned, doesn't offer the same opportunity as Canada and U.S. migration. That's why people won't look that way, says Ugonwa. Mm. Also, Tunde says, hi, Rotus, you quote laws of economics and without considering the peculiar nature of Nigeria. Ian says, instead of our VAT going up, how about slashing the huge allowances that the people of there earn without giving any value for their earnings? We have also point. checked these other countries you're using to encourage us with, and it's not only that their tax rates that are higher, the executives at the top also do not earn as much as our folks. That's a good point. Good point. But see, again, you know, I'm not being elitist here. All I'm saying is that. <laughs> How do you raise the money to do the things you want to do? Where, where's the money going to come? You can't depend on oil. It's not a, you, you have to, you must, you must get tax revenue increased in order for you to be able to fund the initiatives that you want to take care of. Infrastructure, healthcare, and so on. Where's, please, if anybody has any idea, send in a text message. Where is the money going to come from? All right, speaking of money, uh, I think it's our final story. Amcon is looking for investors for Polaris Bank. Uh, according to this, says here, the, the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria is seeking new investors to take over Polaris Bank after the elections next month. Uh, they're saying that the spokesman for Amcon, this was Jude Mwazo, uh, was quoted, I think it was quoted by Reuters. Uh, says here, the election season has slowed down things. Thank you. That's Benga Kamo. This is your message about us not being in Davos. I disagree. I don't know why elections should you know, uh, uh, slow, slow things down. But anyway, he says uh, that this is Amcon spokesman Jude Unwazo. The election season has slowed down things. Uh, we would advertise for expressions of interest from investors after elections and commence the sale process. Hmm. Who will buy Polaris Bank? If anyone wants to guess? You think, again, this, co this goes back to my argument again. If you want to sell Polaris Bank to an investor, an investor will look at our banking sector and say, hmm, do I want to go in there and buy this bank? Do I want to have to deal with, you know, regulatory issues and so on and so forth? Nigeria has to become more attractive, mm. right? It's like a guy who wants to go to a bar and wants to meet someone or you have to go there. You have to you, you prep yourself up, sound intelligent, look good. Nigeria has to do what she has to do in order to attract investors into this country. We got we got work, people. We got plenty of work. More messages? Yes, we yeah. have more messages. And people are still going on about your tax and comments. <laughs> but there's a question here. Yeah. Mr. Sunday asks, will inflation drop after the election? Mm, well, okay, so that is that's a very good question. Yes, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's projected to because the election spending is part of the reason why we're going to probably see a moderate increase uh, in inflation. And then, uh, so it might, it might come down, and then, but then food inflation has been the major driver. In, so that's what we're going to be looking at. But it might actually moderate a bit after the election. So yeah, po possibly. All right, Rose, that's all you can take. Today. All right. Hey, thanks for your messages. I love being challenged by our listeners. Our listeners are the best. I enjoy all the messages they send in. Thanks, Ayo. Thanks, Kyle. All right, guys, stay close to me. We've got more great programming coming your way. First, the first comes up at 7.30, and then other things related. So, please, stay close.